April, I went to New Mexico to learn from Stella Maria Bear, the rocks and dirt at Stella's earth pigment paint making workshop at Moon Horse Ranch, and I will never see dirt and rock the same. Stella is an earth pigment painter, photographer, mother, and a steward of the land. The amount of intention, love, and dedication that she puts on her process is transmitted deeply in her teaching, land, and art. Making my art practice as sustainable as possible has been a very important journey for me for years. I currently only use earth mineral watercolors for my art, and I've wanted to learn how to make my own watercolors for years. I am deeply inspired by starting my long life journey on making natural pigment watercolors. I know I've seen less than the tip of the iceberg, and I'm extremely excited to be starting the long life journey to learn from Earth in new ways. I am forever bowing to the wisdom our planet beholds, and forever grateful for the humans that help us get initiated in the ways of nature. A couple of days ago, I visited Kramer Pigments, which is this shop in New York City, and they have all things raw art materials for painters. And they have a bunch of earth pigments as well as supplies for artists that want to make their own paintings. And they have a great selection of stones and already grinded stones and earth pigment for you to make your own watercolors and oils so i got a bunch of stuff I got this beautiful Mueller. This is my first Mueller ever. I am so thankful for Stella, who is this amazing painter that I took the workshop in New Mexico with, as she recommended Kramer pigments. I also got three stones. I got green jasper, I got lapis lazuli, and I got celadonite. celadonite. Um, they do come in plastic bags, but I will be reusing these ones. I got watercolor medium and also a bunch of empty watercolor half pans. And I'm so excited to start grinding these up to turn them into watercolors. And as I was mentioning, I know this is like a long life journey. I am in no means in capability of showing anyone else how to make watercolors. This is just me sharing my first approaches towards making my own dirt and rock natural pigments. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. And I'm so happy that the watercolor medium that I got is all made from natural ingredients. I believe it's just two ingredients. So let's get into it. Let's see how it goes.
This video is not a tutorial as I am in no capacity to teach others how to make watercolors from earth. So this video is just me sharing the beginning of this long life journey I am embarking on. Before actually getting hands on, I knew this was a process I was very interested in learning about and how to do it. But I didn't know how meditative it would be to actually turn rocks into watercolors. For me, the process feels like a trance, like a conversation with the rocks, the mortar and the pestle. Before I continue sharing about making watercolors from Earth, I want to give thanks to Squarespace for being today's video sponsor. Squarespace is the virtual home of my online shop, art portfolio, domain, and email campaigns since 2018, and I couldn't recommend them enough. Lately, I've been loving their flexible website templates. You can start with one of their professional templates and customize the look, content, and add the features that fit your unique needs. I'm also a fan of their password-protected sites where I can share exclusive content with my clients and even have private online shops like the one I have for my Patreons. If you're ready to start your creative business, you can head to squarespace.com to get a two-week free trial. And once you're ready to launch, you can go to squarespace.com slash caroarevalo to get 10% of your first purchase of a website or domain with Squarespace. I love getting lost in the sounds made while grinding the rocks. I love how the texture changes while they begin to dissolve and how much of a trance I go into by hearing the sounds change with the repetitive spiral movement of the pestle until the rocks are turned into dust. It has also been fascinating to learn just by observing and by listening how many different textures of dust there are. You can tell by how easily the pestle starts to move at some point, by the sound of the repetitive movement changing, by observing what used to be a rock and now is dust. Honestly, I had no idea how much I would be hooked by the act of grinding rock itself. It is a beautiful practice and one that feels so inviting within itself. I actually love how long it takes, how much presence is required from you while working with it. I have also loved to take my mortar, pestle and rocks outside just do this whole process under the sun and feeling the wind. Mm -hmm. 
It all feels like a very old, magical tradition. One which is very rooted in the earth and the hands. I can't help but think about how an AI making digital paintings will never substitute the feelings created and emanated by making watercolors from nature itself and then creating art with it. The process is long, it consists of several steps, and I'm finding so much joy in the whole process. Just like with any new practice, I believe it's important not only to learn by hands-on practice, but also by learning from the folks who have great experience in these. I have recently learned that some pigments like French ochre or terra posuli contain chemicals like lead which shouldn't be breathed in. So it is important to know which pigments you're working with and have the right equipment for it. It's been the longest day of making paintings and you have no idea how much nervousness I've felt of doing the process of actually making the watercolor. This is my first time doing it so I think what really helped me go through that pressure is knowing that this is a trial and whatever comes out of it is part of the learning process of making amazing watercolors one day. I'm actually very tired. I still have three colors to go, so I'm going to make myself a haldidu, go outside for a little bit, and then I'll come back to finish.
process of mixing the rock dust with medium has also been a whole journey within itself. And just like with any recipe, there are rules to follow, but there's also the personal adjustments we make in order to turn the recipe into our own. finished my color swap and making my watercolors for today. I think this was a successful first time. One of my colors is very very wet so I'll see if tomorrow it actually dries up or if it was just a trial and error of learning that that was a little bit too much water. So I'm quite happy with this first attempt at doing watercolors. It's been such a beautiful journey of really bringing more awareness into how much it really takes to create each one of these colors and i'm very happy with the palette that i got today this is definitely a practice that i want to keep learning and i want to keep deepening and also getting better at mixing the colors themselves at grinding the rocks at taking all the organic matter out of the dirt as well as you know, all the rocks and dirt that I have right now have been collected from New Mexico, from Moon Horse Ranch, Stella Maria Briar's land, and I haven't collected any new dirt or rock here in Woodstock in New York because before I start collecting, I really want to understand where can I collect and where do I have permission to collect. There are a lot of national parks where collecting rocks and dirt and plants and whatnot is not permitted and that is something that is very important to me to always take what is given and not just steal something that is not mine to take. So and thank you for watching this video. I know this is not like a how to make your own earth pigment colors because I'm definitely not in the position of teaching that. Thank you for tuning in. Feel free to give this video a like or share it with someone you love or even leave a comment if you liked it. This really helps my content be boosted by the algorithm and brands to want to keep working with me. And that brings me to thank you Squarespace for sponsoring today's video and for being this channel's sponsor. And I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. I hope this was a little invitation to get curious about your art supplies and where do they come from and what is the connection with the land. And I'll see you next time. Bye.